Hey guys, Marissa at KitchenTableStamper.com. So this fun little peekaboo box was our challenge at the craft social for the last oh, a little over a week. I made a welcome Easter version and now I thought I'd wrap up the challenge or end the challenge with this fun little witty scissors strawberry box. Okay, let's take a look at some of the materials you need here. I've got a piece of crumb cake card stick stock and this one is two and a half by seven and three eighths and then I've got crumb cake card stock that is one and five eighths by two and a half and we have one two three four of those and that is the uh, base of the box that's the little wrapper and this mechanism here that slides out. So let's start with that. We're going to do some scoring for the base of our box on our simple score tool. And let's pop that in here. I've always got a template photo on the project sheet and the project sheet can be found if you follow the link to the blog below the video. And then on the video in the post under the embedded video you will find a clickable link that will bring the project sheet up for you. Then you can either save or download that save or download that PDF or print it. Alright, so we're going to score on the 7 and 3 eighths inch side at 3 and an eighth. At 7 eighths. 2 and 3 quarters. 3 and a quarter. 5 and 1 eighth and seven inches. And then we're gonna get really crazy with this box and we're gonna emboss that basket pattern on it. Got the 3D basket weave folder here. And let me get my big shot. We want the outside exposed surfaces of our box to have this gorgeous basket texture. You see on the sides, the bottom, even the top behind the designer series paper, we have the basket. So what we're going to do is we're going to open the folder and put the crumb cake cardstock in so that it basket weaves the first one, two, three, four, five panels. We're going to leave the second two panels outside of the folder. Do you see? One, two score lines. These two panels hang out. Those do not need to be basket weaved. Let's line up our basket weave nice and straight. It's a linear pattern so we want to make sure that it doesn't go uphill or downhill. Now we're going to run it through the machine. And there's our beautiful basket. Now we're going to have to go back really quickly and just make sure that our score lines are still visible. So we're going to go back and now we're going to gently score over those lines again. Three eighths. They're still there, but because of the embossed pattern, that was seven eighths, two and three quarters, three and a quarter and five and one eighths. The embossed design kind of blurs those score lines. Now let's work those score lines with phone folder. We want to do it gently so that we don't flatten out our gorgeous embossed pattern. They're going to fold really easy. The paper fibers are very soft right now. So there's the base of our box with the two slide out panels. Now, I want to give these little pop out slide out panels a lot of stability. So we're going to go ahead and adhere these crumb cake pieces, these one and five eighths by two and a half inch pieces together using some multi-purpose liquid glue. You can be generous. You just don't want it to squeeze out the side, but you do want to kind of laminate the pieces together. 
line up your edges nice and tight and then burnish down you will get maybe a little bit of glue seeping so be careful that you don't glue it to the table and then do the same with the panels for the other side of our little slide out our little peekaboo box all right so is it looking like the little slide out box yet i think we're getting close let's adhere our designer series paper i've got those right here let me bring the sample in again these are from the six by six regals designer series paper and we have the gingham pattern and these are one and three eighths by two and a quarter we're going to adhere them to the tops of our little i don't know they look like wings the way they're laid out right now don't they <laughs> our little slide out panels okay it's getting closer right starting to look like a project this piece is two and a quarter by one and five eighths. It's a little bit bigger. We're gonna use this Venetian pattern on the front of the next box, but let's put it aside for just a minute. Let's assemble the box and then we'll adhere the designer series paper on the front. I need my paper trimmer. And let's slide these guys to the side. I've got a page protector here. It's a thin poly page protector. I buy them on Amazon. It's the same page protectors I use when I'm um, building my template book. So I've showed you that I keep a template for projects that I'm gonna make again and again. And I put them in a binder and I use these poly sleeves. Um, they're very lightweight, they're very flexible. They don't weigh a lot, which is nice when you've got a binder full of them. But I'm just putting it in my paper trimmer and I'm going to cut one inch off of the top open end. So now we've got a little one inch loop. Let's get some scissors and tear and tape. First thing we're going to do is cut off the bind, bind the bound edge. And now we've got a long strip. Then we'll cut at the fold. This is a piece for another one of these little sliders. So put that one aside. Now back to our little box, we've got the panels that are all embossed and those little panels we want up away from us. We're going to work on this larger of the two not embossed panels. Take our plastic from the page protector and we're going to bring it around the box and then we're going to fold it over add a little tear and tape along the edge we're going to burnish that down and then remove the liner then we're going to take out the slack and wrap the clear plastic all the way around this panel you want to really work at lining up the edges and then burnish you're going to have some excess cut that off Another piece of tear and tape over the top of that. All the way along that seam. You're gonna burnish that hard with your bone folder. Okay, pretty cool, huh? Slide that tear and tape all the way to the edge. And if your plastic sticks out is a little bit long here, you can do a little trim on that. Isn't that neat? All right, now. We need to do a little bit of stamping now in order to get the box put together. So let's grab a scrap of Whisper White cardstock. We're going to punch a couple of punches from here and then do a quick bit of die cutting. So I broke it down on the project sheet by about what size scrap you'd need for each thing, but really just use up your scraps. This piece is four and three quarters. By three and a half. Let's see if we can get all of our white pieces from that scrap. First thing I've got is an everyday label punch here, and we're gonna go ahead and punch the everyday label. Next, I've got a timeless label punch. 
then we're gonna go ahead and punch the timeless label. Now we need just a little bit of die cutting here, so I'm gonna slide these guys aside, grab the big shot. Got a couple of die cut shapes that we're gonna use. We're gonna use this fancy square, the larger one. You can see there's a smaller fancy square too. We're gonna use this fancy square die. That's for our inside greeting, and that one's from Ornate Frames, and that's a um, holiday favorite, so if you're looking for that one on the website. And then we're gonna do a bitty little tag. This is my favorite. As a matter of fact, I've bought this die set a couple of times, because I um, actually wore out one of my little tags and broke it. That's how much I use this little tag. That little tag comes from Bouquet Bunch dies. Let's give that a quick crank. Pop those guys out and we'll set them aside with our other pieces. Now we've got the big shot all set up here. One more bit of die cutting. We've got a piece of Shaded spruce cardstock here. And this is oh about four and a quarter by four and a half. We're gonna die cut from the flourish dies, this large viney flourish. Just pop that guy on there and give him a crank too. I really like this vine with anything strawberry. Take that right off of there. Look at that. And there's our vine. Set that guy aside and get rid of the big shot. The last little die cutting I did ahead of time. I've got a real red heart. And that real red heart came from the Be Mine Stitched Dies. And when you cut this little um, spray all these hearts come out. I cut it in real red and I just put the hearts in a bag and use them whenever I need them Got shaded spruce here the scrap from cutting our vine. Let's cut our pull tab now Bring in the rest of our pieces our sample. This is the circle tab punch. We need one of those Got memento tuxedo black ink. Let's stamp our parts so we can prepare them to glue down. My strawberry thank you very much is from the Witty Sisms stamp set. I love this nine piece punny stamp set. It's um, every for every occasion and has some really cute art, of course. Thank you very much. The strawberry is my favorite. I'm gonna ink up in Memento Tuxedo Black and stamp on the Everyday Label Punch. This everyday label punch is perfect for this image. My inside greeting is so lucky to have a friend like you. And that is going on the fancy square label. So lucky to have a friend like you is from the heartfelt photopolymer stamp set. This is a 13 piece photopolymer stamp set from the January through June mini catalog. Ta-da! I love that little greeting. All right, let's get rid of the ink pad and do some coloring. Coloring the strawberry is simple. I've got Real Red Stampin' Blends, Shaded Spruce Stampin' Blends, and the Dark Mango Melody. All right, there's our little strawberry. Got my multi-purpose liquid glue. Let's go ahead and glue a little heart to the tag. That way I can't lose it. Now on one side, we're going to go ahead and glue our so lucky to have a friend like you label. You can do that 
just a little bit left to center. Then the circle tab. We're going to glue that one so that we have a pull tab. We want that to be very secure. So use liquid glue. That'll make kind of a permanent bond here or some tear and tape. Fast fuse would probably work too if you still have some. And we're going to glue that right on the edge of our panel here. Then on our other side, on the candy panel, we're going to add some multi-purpose liquid glue and adhere timeless label centered. Then we need our flourish. What I did here with the flourish is I just trimmed off between the second and third leaf right in the center here. And we're going to make this two pieces. I'm going to soften where I trimmed. This piece will go to decorate the inside. This piece, soften that edge, make sure it doesn't hang off underneath our very much, will go to decorate the outside. And get some multi-purpose liquid glue here. Now I never, on this particular die, I never push out the little um, negative pieces in the leaves. I just let which ones fall out are going to fall out and I leave the ones that stay in. I like the texture that that brings. Some people don't, so right now you could weed the little negative spaces out of this vine if you like to, but I let them be. There are two little decorative pieces. Let's bring our box back in now. We're going to take your pick and remove that tear and tape adhesive that we put on the outside of our little plastic band. Once that's sticky, I'm going to take the So Lucky to Have a Friend Like You panel and adhere that face down into that tear and tape adhesive. I like to use my bone folder here now to burnish that. We're going to fold up the little tab here, add some more tear and tape. Let's burnish that down and remove the liner. Now we're going to fold that up. Pretty, pretty cute, huh? Do you see? It's starting to come together. Now, got tear and tape. It was on our left side before we rolled. Now that it's rolled up and closed up, we're going to put tear and tape on the plastic, top to bottom, as far to the right edge as you can get. Burnish it. Weed it. And now we're going to add our candy panel. The candy panel is going to go face up, all the way along the edge, centered top to bottom, and then burnish that into the tear and tape adhesive. Now before I close it all up, let me show you. This will demystify the whole mechanism for you. See how that works? Pretty cool, huh? All right. So to finish this up, we're going to wrap around what's left of the box and tuck that smallest tab underneath and burnish it down, finishing our box. To keep things real nice and tidy, you can snip just a little angle cut here if you want to. That'll give you a nice clean edge underneath. And we need some tear and tape adhesive. And it goes on the outside of the box. Burnish that down. Weed the release. And then put the sticky side down. You're going to slide it right underneath your moving panel. And when you've got it all lined up nice and neat, you can put the box down flat, you can flatten it out and burnish it this way. And pop it right back up. I'm going to add the candy to mine. It kind of gives the box overall a little bit more stability. So let's pull and open. What cute! 
I've got these little chocolate covered strawberries. They're strawberry cream and they are made by Palmer's. And I don't even think strawberry floats my boat. It's my it's my logo, it's my theme. I just love it. And when I saw those, I knew I had to have them. I had no idea they were gonna be this fun little peekaboo slider though, that's for sure. I'm gonna just add my candy onto the left side, a little peekaboo with a couple of glue dots. Try not to destroy that really cute wrapper. I'm gonna center that in the label. And then I'm gonna burnish it from behind. Got a 1 8 inch circle punch. I'm gonna punch a hole in the tab. Bottom of center. Got about nine inches of linen thread here. I've already pulled it off the spool. I'm gonna bring it through. And then over under. So we're tying it on the tab through that hole. Bring the tails together. This one's a little frayed, so I'm gonna trim it. All right, so we got both tails here. Bring them together nice and tight, and we're gonna thread them through the tag. Back to front, and then tie a bow. Isn't that the cutest little detail? I just love this. This box is so me. If I were a project, this is the one I'd be. Now because this is going to get a lot of handling, I'm going to grab another little mini glue dot, pick it up with my take your pick tool. I'm going to lift the tag, put the glue dot on the shaded spruce tab, and then squash that little tag right into it so it becomes more stationary now. And trim the tails. All that's left is decorating the outside of our box. So let's grab our kind of Venetian print. Oh, that script is kind of pretty too. I'm gonna use the script. I don't use that script very often. I like it, I think it'll compete less with the vine too. Let's see, see how it looks. Let's make sure our script is right side up though. It definitely is a directional pattern. And let's burnish it to the top of our box making sure that I've got an even border, that crumb cake all the way around. Thank you very much. Let's grab that 1 8 inch hole punch again. We're gonna make this one a tag. I'm gonna need maybe about 10 inches of this polka dot tool ribbon here, the super white polka dot tool. And we'll just tie it right off the spool here, less waste. I'm going to thread through from the back to the front, loop up and over, and make a pretty loopy bow. Give the bow a little finesse. Don't tie with the um, Whisper White polka dot tool. Don't tie it too tight until you know you've got what you like, because those little dots are like speed bumps. It's hard to finesse the bow once you've pulled it tight. Trim off the excess. Here's our gorgeous little flourish. Let's go ahead and add some multi-purpose liquid glue to the back of this guy. And I just squeeze the bottle lightly and swipe across the die. You don't need glue everywhere. You don't need a lot of glue. You just need to touch a little bit in a lot of places. I want this to go all the way across the whole front and off the edges just a little bit right and left. Burnish that down. Got some mini Stampin' Dimensionals here and I'm gonna add them to the box, not to the label, because the label goes past the top and bottom edges of the box. If you put the adhesive on the box, then when you put the label on, all the adhesive is covered and you don't have any adhesive hanging off past the limits of the box. Close that guy up. Okay, dimensionals are all sticky. Let's add our label, centered top to bottom and left to right. Burnish that down. There they are. Thank you very much. If you've got any questions at all about the project, 
about the Kitchen Table Stamper Craft Social and the fun challenges we have over there. If there's anything I can do to help you stay crafty, you can email marissa at kitchentablestamper.com and you can shop Stampin' Up! 24-7 at marissaelvarez.stampinup.net. Thanks for watching.